Hello everybody, it's Zane with Sailing Views, and today I'm building a rudder. So, I learned that uh, my audio was not very crisp during all of my recordings, or at least uh, it wasn't just not crisp, it wasn't there. So, I'll work on that in the future, but in the meantime, I'm building a rudder. Actually, I'm building two rudders. Uh, now, what I'm showing you right here is a piece of juniper. It's 15 inches wide and 8 feet long. Um, I'm using it to make Rose 19 rudders. Um, I, I need one for one of my boats. Uh, one of my customers needs one for his boat. So, since I have an old hippie friend of my father's that, that owns a mill and does a lot of woodwork, you know, he collects a lot of wood. And he also dries it out for 5 to 10 years. Well, he had this great piece of juniper that he told me would work great as a core for a rudder. Now, I'm not exactly sure how light this thing's going to end up when I'm all said and done. Hopefully, it'll be relatively light because I'm about to uh, cut it all up and find out. So, in this video, um, what you're seeing here, this little clip you're seeing right now, this is me trying to cut this wood with a jigsaw. Now, I'm just using a standard wood blade. It's a little rough and it's I guess a little old and used because it's not cutting the wood as well as I thought. Uh, the juniper, some parts of it cut easily, some parts didn't. You know, and I'm not sure if the, how, I don't know much about this wood. Uh, Roy Hyde, the guy who gave it to me, probably would. Uh, he knows all about this stuff. He knows the wood. He gets, he cuts down the trees. He stores it in a, in a trailer for 10 years and dries it out and gets it in good shape. Well, that's what he's done with this piece, and he managed to, I managed to uh, secure it from him. Well, as you can see here, I'm probably triggering all of you carpenters and all of you uh, people that actually do this for a living, you know, watching me do it on a homemade sawhorse with a little jigsaw. Yeah, y'all are going to probably lose your mind on just everything I've got going on with this, but eh process you know it's not perfect but it works remember this is redneck alabama boat yard and uh we're getting it done one way or the other so here i am basically finishing up the rudder uh you'll see here in a second the, the you know it's about to drop out and i have one piece and i'll show you the shape of it so as it, it drops out right here here's the rudder now what i plan on doing with this rudder is uh, shaping it and then I'll glass over it and probably gel coat over that and make it look nice and neat but like I say there you go there's there I am in all my glory trying to uh, clean the camera and tell you all kind of good things about this rudder but yeah it didn't work so what I did was I copied a Phil's foil rudder now Phil's foils have been making rudders for Rose 19s for a number of years and they kind of changed the shape up to this shape. Uh, I don't know if it's a better shape than the original one or faster or if it's just, you know, easier for them to reproduce or to manufacture. I don't really know. But I have a Phil's foil blade that I'm about to put on my dad's boat. So I figured I'd go ahead and copy it, you know, see what it, see how, how it works. I really don't know. But so... There's your rough shape. I cut out one uh, hunk of that wood. It's in the shape of the Phil's foil. Now I think I'm going to show you uh, the actual sizing, how it lines up here. And so all I did was trace, you know, this one rudder on, on the wood with a pencil, drew it out, cut it to shape. I think I'm going to show you here uh, how close I came. And obviously, you know, I'm no true carpenter, but it came out pretty good uh, you know it's got some fairing and straightening out to do but I figured that was the case so the rudder came out all right I'm pleased with that one now uh, I think in this video you're about to see a high speed run of me cutting the second rudder out it's like I say it was a big enough hunk of wood where I could cut out two rudders so uh, once again carpenters please don't get too triggered Alabama redneck Boat works here. I'm doing it on an old wooden spool. So 
You know, this was a like a cable spool, so eh. But here you go. I'm cutting it out at uh, nine times the speed, so it's taking a little while, and of course, running into weird issues and trying to help my buddies. Uh, by the way, in this video, you're going to see my some some of my friends that hang out over here a lot and work at the uh, work with me sometimes. Um, you know, they offer a, a good hand whenever I need another person to help me do things. So, you know, we kind of help each other out in that respect. But they're working on, they started off trying to add a fifth wheel hitch to the back of a truck. They didn't make it. They ended up changing their uh, direction. They started doing brakes instead. I'll, I'll tell you more about that later. But here's the second rudder. Uh, I had a little bobo there at the back edge, but you know, it'll all sand out and get straightened out once I get to the final shaping. Uh, that is probably rudder number two. So it's there. Um, so I've got two of these blades made up. Uh, now I think I'm going to uh, move this rudder around. And I'm showing you now how I have, you know, two hunks of wood. They're cut out in the right shape. Uh, this is one inch thick. Uh, wood by the way actually it's probably a little thicker than one inch um, so there's a lot of grinding that needs to be done on this uh, to get the get the overall shape but I like starting with a larger hunk that way I can keep the cordage and move the, keep the cordage and the fat part of the rudder where I want which is kind of that forward quarter four you know quarter hunk of the uh, the rudder and what I'm actually trying to tell you in this diagram is where I'm going to be grinding where I'm making the fat part where I'm putting the shape in, uh, but once again, I didn't have audio, so I'm just kind of have to bear with me on that. I think in a second I'm going to show you the Phil's foil rudder on top, just to show you the thickness. Um, and now my camera is not great; I don't have good gear, so. But that's the thickness I'm going to try to make these two hunks. You know, roughly, I'm going to try to go for that shape. Now I think that cordage is a little far forward. And it's just a straight torpedo teardrop. And I, I'm not a completely sold on that shape. I like actually, especially with a slower boat, I like moving the cordage back a little bit, uh, fattening it up, you know, maybe a quarter inch further back than where their max width is. I like doing that because you're going so slow, you're trying to generate um, a little bit of lift off of it. When it's that skinny, it's great. It tight, drives a nice tight groove and it's... You know, not a break, but you're not producing any lift. You know, that's a good light air rudder. Uh, you know, it does, doesn't, doesn't it, it, it's not keeping the flow attached, in my opinion. It's just, you know, being thin and skinny and doing this thing. But, you know, I'm showing you uh, the thickness of the rudder and a rough idea of the shape. Now, I plan on changing that shape up a little bit, like you say. Being that slow, I don't mind moving the cordage a little further back. Uh, the cordage being the fat part of the rudder. Moving a little further back and keeping the front in a little bit of a sharper angle. Um, I don't know. I'll show you, show you when it's all said and done. Uh, this video is, like I say, part one of two. Or maybe even three. I really don't know yet. This is just the rough shaping of the wood. So with this... Uh, in this part of the video, I'm walking over here to my little sanding shed here, and I'm trying to pick out the tool of choice. Which tool do I need for the job? Uh, I'm digging through, digging through, trying to find which grinder I want. And as you can see, I found the perfect grinder. I found the tool. So, there it is. A little five-inch uh, high-speed grinder. With a paddle wheel, 40 grit paddle wheel on it. Now, what I'm showing you right now is the fact that it's about to rain on me again. Uh, it seems to rain here every day. So this is a little, about a one hour time lapse video of me grinding on this thing. Um, it's sped up to, what have we got the speed on this thing? I think it's uh, 10 times eight times speed here I'm not sure um, but this is it there's a whole lot of sanding a whole lot of grinding and I've, I've only got a couple minutes of this grinding in here mainly because this went on for a couple of hours 
and my camera died as well halfway through it. So I'm giving you a quick high speed glimpse of me with this grinder. And what I'm doing is I'm working on the trailing edge mainly first. Uh, you know, like say, it's an inch and a half or an inch and an eighth thick board. So I'm really just got to start grinding huge chunks of the way and uh, going to town. And I think I can tell you right there that it's hot and tiring. Because I'm, I'm using all the force I can. I'm pushing down really hard, uh, really grunting on it, leaning on it, putting all my weight on it, just trying to take down that, that wood as much as I can. And unfortunately, you know, I did a lot of uh, video work trying to flip the rudder around and show you how I'm taking it down, but the battery died. Now, this is, a, uh, uh, I guess, the video from after I'm close to done i'm not quite done but it's it's getting much closer now i haven't done much with the head of it like i just showed you there but i've done uh, a little bit on the front but primarily been working from the back the trailing edge of the rudder towards the front and as you can see it's it's not quite done but it's almost an eighth of an inch thick a little skinnier than that um in the back it's probably three quarters of an inch wide right now on the sides uh, if that now what I've been doing is I've been grinding it down and I'm trying to add leave room you know and I that means I can get a little little herky jerky with my sanding uh, mainly because I'm gonna wrap this thing with fiberglass I plan on making it you know I want it to last for a long time this wood's been dry sitting in a, in, a, in a dehumidified trailer for 10 to 15 years good dry wood so I'm going to coat it with resin, and it should soak up all that resin, wrap it with glass. That should make it good and strong and last for, who knows, a good long time. But I'm trying to show you right now in this video the rough shaping I've done. Now, this is definitely not the final product. It is not ready for glass. This is just sort of a rough end. I'm showing you where it's at. I know there's still hot points on the, on the uh, starboard side of it in the middle, and... It just needs a little bit of balancing out. Uh, what I'll do from here, this stage on, I'll probably get one of those uh, six inch flat grinders or flat sanders, and I'll sand all that a little more level. Now at this point uh, of the video, I've been out here for, I don't even know how many hours, two or three hours, and I'm getting hot, tired, and it's starting to rain. So, you know, being new at this and not really sure what I'm doing with these uh, videos or the camera, I'm sitting down, I'm kind of squatting all goofy like a big old dork, just trying to get things in frame and uh, explain to you guys that the rain has started. So poor Robbie, uh, we'll call him Ghost Ship. It's my buddy Ghost Ship. That's him right there. Uh, yeah, here's the rain that's coming over. It's my autofocus doesn't show, but where that little blue dot, I don't know if you can see it. I try to point at it somewhere in this video, but we're that little blue dot surrounded by all that rain. And that has been just about every single day for the last two weeks. So, um, once again, right after I showed you that radar and they're, uh, they were coming inside to <laughs> get out of the rain, basically, um, they're building my buddy's, uh, rebuild my buddy's brakes. It is raining and pouring. <laughs> And poor old ghost ship's still out there playing on the brakes uh, in the rain. <laughs> just like, I'm not, i got to get this finished. <laughs> uh, <laughs> poor old guy. He works really hard. He's a good friend of mine. He can do things I can't do. This is the point when we were talking about umbrellas. So what does he do? He goes to his car and pulls out a couple of umbrellas. And uh, I can tell you right now, I'd already had enough of the day. <laughs> I had a, a lot of interesting things happen to me today, including, uh, you know, between, it, well, I probably shouldn't go into it on video, but like I say, here's the, here's the fun part. Here I am laughing at him uh, with his grand idea. And my, uh, my buddy Jason over there, the big guy, he, he's, gonna, he's gonna volunteer to hold the umbrellas umbrellas because well it's his truck and he conned Robbie into working on it and so poor old Robbie aka ghost ship he's gonna stand out there and try to finish these brakes while it while it rains um 
I have I have news for you. Um, they didn't finish. They tried really hard, but it didn't finish. Uh, this is about the point I'm basically giving up on them. You know, I'm like, all right, my job is done. My rudder is dry. Uh, it's roughly shaped. Uh, you know, Robbie's doing everything he can to keep the tools dry, keep himself dry. As you can see, he's soaking wet. I was like, you know, yeah, it's been a, been a long enough day. So I hang out with the dog, tell the dog I'm leaving. She's like, all right, I'm out of here too. And with that, I leave these guys. I'm heading inside. You know, there's only so much work you can do in the rain and this much humidity. And this, this is the beginning of the rain. It uh, hasn't started yet. You know, this is just the minor drizzle. Um, let's see where this video goes here. All right, yeah, I think we're about to go to a clip. Yeah, here is literally the time it took me from walk from the backyard to the front yard. Uh, you know, I came inside, I kind of washed my hands, looked around, then I walked outside because I heard the rain get heavier. So this is what's been going on from the time it took to get to the front yard to the backyard or the backyard to the front. So here's the rain. That's how much rain has dropped since I walked from the back to the front. You know, that's two, two to three inches of water in that little hole there. And this is what our daily deluge is. It pretty much happens every single day. And for some reason, it rains on my house two to three times a day. So it's very difficult to get work done, as you can see. Even though I've got a covered shed, you know, there's only so much you can do in this much humidity, especially when it's 110 degrees, you know, with a heat index outside. So... So I'm basically done. I come inside. The cats chase me around, wondering why I'm wet and smell like dog. And yeah, this is Keisha. She's just chasing me around the house. Anyway, so with that, guys, I'm going to let you know this is the end of the video. This is part one. Uh, I'll get back to part two. I'll show you uh, probably my final sanding of the uh, rudder. And then I will glass it, sand it, ferret, and I might say the painting for the third video. I don't know. We'll work on that. But with that, um, this video is almost done. I hope you liked it. It's a little different. Uh, I haven't been doing the interviews much lately, and I haven't done much. So over out, and bye-bye.